Well, hey friends, Dr. Harry here again, and welcome back to another show. And we're gonna talk about time today, friends, because time is a thief. And you may have heard uh, this before yet, many, why? Why as physicians and at nurses, we're always chasing time and never seem to have enough of it? And actually, if you take this one step farther, why are there colleagues and peers that have mastered and seemingly tamed time? Friends, we all have the same 24 hours, so let's make the most of each hour. And heck, let's make the most of each minute. As, as goal-oriented and high-achieving professionals, be it if you're a physician or nurse, you're continually looking to gain more time. And these tips that I've given you will, will help you. But just a quick note before you get started, I won't be telling you to sleep less. In fact, it'll be quite the opposite. I want you to sleep more to gain more time and read on. Read on and listen on and, and, and learn and learn why. The first thing you have to do is actually control your first hour. You must control the first hour of the day, period. All day success begins with that first hour. One of my most, one of the most mentally draining aspects of being a physician or nurse is the incredible number of decisions we make uh, during a clinical shift. And while we likely make one to two major decisions per patient encounter, the enormous amount of choices we make daily leads to burnout. But winning the first hour of the day, you will win the day. And I've said this many, many times before, don't even look at your phone for that first hour. Successful physicians and nurses must develop and defend and defend their first hour of the day and create this habit. Brian Tracy, who's a legendary motivational speaker, mentions that uh, he says this as a quote, successful people are simply those with successful habits. And friends, I want you to create this habit. A great way to start the day is with your own, what Tony Robbins calls, hour of power. You know, other people have uh, these things, uh, these hour of power, such as Jack Canfield and Tim Ferriss. They have their own version. But now is the time to develop your own, is your own way to develop this. And I've been practicing my Arise morning ritual for just about two and a half years. And if you want it, there'll be a link in the show notes. And it's the amount of time that I have that has gained me, that has been most impressive, most innumerable for me. My Arise morning ritual as, as a model to develop your own, use mine as to develop your own. The key to success though is you have to start small, say, I don't know, five minutes to 15 minutes. But the key is to develop a plan that you can do every morning. My Arise ritual is very simple. A, affirmations, R, read, I, inhale, S, scribble or journal, and E is to exercise. From start to finish, my morning routine takes just under an hour. So yes, I go to bed earlier so I can get up sooner. And what I've gained in physical and in mental health is immeasurable, friends, and I encourage you to do the same. So ask yourself, how do you start yourself? How do you start your morning routine? The great thing about a morning routine is, is just that. It's just for you. You don't need an extraordinary amount of, um, of, of time to do it. You just need a little bit of time to set yourself up for a successful day. So start today. The second thing I want to tell you, friends, is to gain control of the small things. For me, I was able to gain control when I recognized that not every small thing is an emergency. I began using the Eisenhower matrix, which I've talked to you about. What is the Eisenhower matrix? Well, the Eisenhower matrix was popularized by Stephen Covey in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He created a decision matrix to identify what's important and what is not, what's urgent and what's not. And, and a guiding principle of President Eisenhower is, what he says is beautifully is, quote, what is important is seldom urgent, and what is urgent is seldom important. So what's the difference between urgent and important? Well, friends, urgent is a task that needs immediate attention. For, for example, a, a crashing patient, a seizing baby, or a myocardial infarction. This task puts us in a reactive mode. In this setting, we are laser focused and we are hurried. This task needs intense concentration. Uh, because the consequence of not dealing with them are immediate. So let's switch gears, for example. Important is a task where the outcome, where the outcome achieves our personal professional goals. 
So things such as you know, a task that looks forward to our long-term ambitions, that's a good important task. Uh, the important tasks are performed calmly, intentionally, and thoughtfully. So in the Eisenhower matrix, there are actually four quadrants, and they're labeled as quadrant one, which is considered an important and urgent. Quadrant two, which is important but not urgent. Quadrant three, which is not important but urgent and quadrant four, which is not important and not urgent. And if you want a copy of your eyes of, of an Eisenhower matrix, there's a little link in the blog post that accompanies this. Just click it and you'll get your own copy. The other thing I want to mention, number three, is say no more than you say yes. And for most of my career, I felt the need, I needed to say yes to every opportunity to be valued or advanced professionally. The reality is that I was prioritizing the needs of other people rather than the needs of myself or my family. My goal suffered and stalled and my wellness in turn deteriorated. And I learned that there is a big difference between uh, being pleasing, between pleasing people and helping people. There's a, a vast difference. Helping people is not about saying yes to all the people all the time. Rather, it's about saying yes to some of the people, some of the time, to some of their requests. So Warren Buffett says this beautifully, the difference between successful people and very successful people is that very successful people say no to almost everything. And that's beautifully stated, Mr. Buffett. So saying no is not easy, I get it, friends, but extremely necessary to maintain our wellness and gain more time. You may feel disappointed at first that you're letting the person down, but remember, Remember, friends, that you must make yourself a priority in your path toward wellness. This is not selfish, it is imperative. So another thing is to gain more time by starting the night before. One final step before lights go out, at least for me, is to write down my top three must-do tasks for the day, the big three. These are non-negotiable and commit to completing them without exception. I have to get these three things done before I go to bed. And most of us have an evening ritual that consists of washing our face, brushing our teeth, and quickly rushing into bed. Yet this hurried approach leaves many with angst and want for something more. I have a sleep ritual which I encourage you to click on and that will transition your hasty nights toward a more restful and a complete end of a day with a plan for a successful morning and a path toward a better you. So click on that link and you'll see what my sleep ritual is. And friends, and I, and I promise it to you, make sleep a priority. There is a growing body of evidence and the realization that chronic sleep affects our physical and mental health and it starts quite innocently. It starts off with such as a minor headache and irritability and it can quickly escalate to a lack of good decision making and unnecessary risk taking. Uh, finally, it can evolve to things such as depression and increased risk for obesity, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes. So while this intuitively may not make sense, but six to eight hours of sleep every night, every night creates more time. For the hour that you are awake, you are focused. For the hours that you're awake, you're uh, focused, ready, alert. So take this time to make sleep a priority Make sure you start with that evening ritual and make it a priority. So friends, that's what I have for you this week. I want you to be great to yourself and I want you to be great to each other. And remember, I am here to help. My mission is to give you the courage and the tools needed to help you learn, grow, and prosper in the important areas of your life, personally and professionally. So if you're looking to get started and, to be, and begin your journey, toward wellness, I want you to click on the link which is in the show notes. And I've created a free three video series to get you started, to walk you through the first steps uh, that you need to take for this wonderful journey. And I want you to join hundreds and hundreds of other doctors and nurses who have given themselves permission, who have given, had the courage and permitted themselves to deserve a better life. So let's walk this journey together. Again, click on that, the show notes, and you'll see a link to do that because yes, you can succeed at home and work. All it takes is t intent and a mentor to walk with you. If you give me the first, I'll give you the second. I want you to walk with me on this. So let's get started together. So be great to yourselves, friend. And remember, this 
uh, YouTube episode is, is for you. And if you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. It's just right below here. And if you're listening to this podcast uh, via Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, make sure you subscribe to these episodes. I usually do two of them a week. But very importantly, if you find what I've given you useful, make sure you share this with a colleague or a friend. That's how we get the word out. That's how we get more people listening and watching these episodes because friends, this is such a wonderful specialty. Medicine is such a wonderful specialty, uh, but it can be difficult at times. I wanna give you those resources to prepare yourself for those difficult times. So friends, until next time, be great to yourself and each other. We'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.